Hi, this is Sefa and from Traveling Brushes. I recorded a sweet little painting video for you while I was at Cherry Creek in Denver, Colorado of magpies. We don't have magpies in Oregon so they really fascinated me. I had fun watching them while I was there and I had fun painting them. So if you'd like, grab your journal. I'm going to do some feathers and some other things with my Neo Color tools and my water brush. So come on along. Let's paint today. Hello folks, I'm going to do a little sketch today. I am at Cherry Creek Campgrounds in the downtown Denver area. And as I go around camp, I've had a great time. I've noticed these magpies that are around and they're kind of new to me. I've done the sketch already, so I'm going to uh, put the color on now. I've got my water brush and I am using Neo Color 2s today. They're so portable when you're working in um, a journal or whatever art you're doing, they're just great. They're a water-based crayon. So I'm picking a couple of blues and purples to work with. These birds look a little iridescent, so I'm starting with some purple. I'm gonna add it under her feathers, his and her feathers, to make the iridescent look a little colorful. So I'm putting the purple on and enjoying the sound of the trees as I paint today. Now these birds were pretty dark. I'll come back in with some blue colors. Mostly they were all black and blue and of course the white that magpies have. I've been very entertained by them. The park rangers say they're the bullies of the park. A lot like jaybirds, they pick on other animals, squirrels, uh, dogs, cats, not so much peoples. So I have a feeling they might be in the jaybird family. Got a couple blues here to play with. Got a dark blue and a yummy lighter blue to work with. And I have to confess today, I'm working with my new video camera and my new microphone, but I've got to turn the microphone on, so I'm having to sound over this and watch again, which is kind of fun to see what I did. So I'm adding blues onto the feathers and the tail, loading my brush as I go. I love these water brushes because you can literally load them and Use your hand as a palette. The Neo colors are non-toxic, so I often use my back of my wrist for a palette when I'm working, especially when I'm working out. Today I'm in my caravan, enjoying the cool morning air as I work. Following the line of the feathers as I go, the outline of the blues and whites and the directions of the feathers. When you're painting it really makes a difference if you're following the direction of the shape that you're using that you're trying to duplicate. Now I'll go over this with a lot of layers, blues, blacks, other colors, but I start with the blue layer just to mark out where my colors are. Now these guys have white patches on their shoulders, so I have to remember to leave those white patches as I'm painting. Again, following the direction of the feathers as I paint. And adding my base color of blue down. I've enjoyed my stay here in Denver, Colorado. This park is actually in downtown Denver, right in the middle of the city. I don't know how many acres, it's pretty good size, but um, the, camp, the campsites are spread out really nicely, and it's fun because I can just pop out of the 
natural environment into the downtown area. I'm kind of surrounded by freeways, the park is. And I pop out and go play and come back and enjoy the quiet of the park again. So I'm adding some darker blue now, following the direction of the feathers. I often have two or three different colors in my hand and as you see I'll add one color and the other color to mix them on my brush before I take it to my paper. Sometimes I'll actually mix it on the back of my wrist too. But today this is working really well. Now his head and body are black, so I'll leave that for a little later and we'll go to the other bird. Starting with the lighter color on his wings. Oops, wait a minute. That's supposed to be white. Can I save it? Maybe. Gonna grab a tissue and dab. Oh, that didn't work. Okay. Wipe my brush off. Squeeze it and get some water going. And see if I can pull that color off. Oh, it's working. Yay, I saved it. Okay, onward with the blue. Starting again with the lighter blue. In his wing area. Now that purple tone underneath will come through later. I can add more purple if I need to. But it's just to give a variety of colors. Now these guys have really long tails, so I'm going to exaggerate the tail on this guy. It's really fun to see him fly. That's when you see the flash of blue. Most of the time when they're sitting in the trees, you just notice the, the dark and the white, the black and the white. But they have these gorgeous flash of blues. Give a little blue to his other wing. Now in order to darken under his wing there, I'm adding a little bit of dark blue. Give him a little dimension. Grabbing my black now. I'm coming back in and darkening the black areas. Now I'm going to paint around his eye to reserve the white so later on I can remember to come back and put the highlight in. I often will do that with a pen, but I want to reserve that white. So I'm going to paint around it and leave it rather large and I'll come back and make it smaller later. His body is, is very black, so I'm using the black crayon. Again, the more pigment I have, the darker it is. When I have a little bit more water on my brush, it's a little lighter. So I'll probably go back and forth with him a couple of times before I get it exactly the way I like it. A little black on his butt. And I'm going to darken the wings. Now because there's so much blue on there, and I'll blend it out into the blue, and probably add some more dark blue in there. It'll really give the effect of darkening those shoulders so they are, look a little more round. Again with my brush strokes, I'm following the direction of his feathers. I'm blending that edge to shade it. Now the other guy, I'll get nice and black on his head, remembering to follow his eye around as well. The beaks are black, but I'm going to do some grays, and I'll show you that in a minute. But reserving the white of the eye, and continuing to block in the black colors that I need for his head. Don't forget that white spot. Again, the more water I use, the lighter it is. 
I want this pretty dark so I don't have a lot of water. Have more pigment. Give him a little shadow on that bottom again. His black bottom. A little shadow under the wing. So that wing pops forward a little bit. His legs are dark too. I'll add some dark into his legs. Now, I didn't actually take a photograph of these birds because they move pretty quick. So what I did was I googled some images and did the sketches from there. That's not cheating. No, no, that's not cheating. I also have a Sibley's, uh, a bird book that I worked from as well. Now these birds have black on their wingtips. Uh, their wings are white, but there's little black on the wingtips. So I'm going to come in and add that little black on each wingtip on the white. I think that's what helps the flash when they fly. They're noisy birds, like jaybirds. A lot of different sounds. Again, following the shape of each wing tip as I go. Little black on the bottom of his wing. Now there's quite a bit of wildlife, not like um, Yellowstone, mind you, but there's quite a bit of wildlife in this park. There's a lot of squirrels and chipmunks and these crazy birds, of course. Because I'm right by the lake, I'm finding uh, here geese. And it was down the other day, and big white birds. I think they might be egrets or maybe white herons. I haven't decided on that one yet. Uh, using my hand for a palette again to get some grays for his beak. Don't want it too dark, so with a little water, I can pick up a little more or less off of my hand and off of the crayon. Again, I'm still in the blocking stage, so also saw some little pelicans. That surprised me. They were flying across the water one evening when I was down at the lake. I've also seen several deer. There's a mama and two babies that I've seen. And uh, a group of four I saw the other day when I was walking back from the lake in the evening. They're not afraid of um, people, but they sure eyeballed Mr. Barkley. Adding a little black on the top edge of each wing. Uh, that actually is there in my photographs that I looked at. Helps define those wings. I think it... it Helps with the flash too when they fly. I think that's another reason you see the, the white on those wings. do the sticky standing on the fence post. I've got a couple different browns here. Wait a minute. That one might be black. Nope, it's brown. Nope, wait, that's black. Let me find it brown. Sometimes I have to read the labels. Nope, that one's purple. That one's brown. Okay, here we go. Starting with some dark brown. Again, I just love these crayons. It's fun to mix and match, and you can blend on your paper, you can blend on your brush, you can blend on your hand. I just love them. They're by Cran d'Arche. I don't say that right. Neo Color 2s. The ones are not water solu soluble, so if you get a pack, be sure you get the 2s. And, of course, I'm going to plug MaryArtist.com 
And now that I'm a traveler, I give them a call or order online and they ship it to wherever I'm at to the local UPS store and I have it within a week and I'm off and playing again. I just got a package recently and it was fun, just like Christmas. Christmas on the road. So I've got some yellows in here now, making some texture. Again, I'm still adding base layers. Not finished by any means. Getting some grain of that wood going. Some shadows under the bird. That's looking pretty good. I think I'll grab my blues again. Oh, I'm going to define his belly. So I'm going to get a little blue out. And just give his belly a little shadow. This is a little different, lighter blue than what I've been using. So I'll put it on there. Get some water on my brush. And just kind of blend it out into his belly. Can do a little shadow on the top of his wings here. Helps him look a little rounder. You can also pull some of that blue off of uh, the wing shape that I already have on there. And I really like this blue color, so I'm going to add a little bit more here and there as well. Darkening those wings and playing a little bit more with dimension. Looking for a different blue. I've got a really dark one somewhere. There we go. A little more touching on the beaks. It's nice to have that napkin handy. Some shadows. Finding a couple more blues. And off we go. This guy doesn't have his wings by any means done. So we're adding a little bit more blue on these wings. Working with the shapes. Putting uh, shadows under and leaving the top highlighted helps it give shape to it. And some more dark on his tail. These guys are looking pretty good. Adding a little bit more dark in those wings again for shape. They were pretty dark birds, so. It's all about going back and checking your details and looking again and seeing, comparing the picture and seeing what needs to happen next. Looking good. I'm liking this. I'm gonna take a break. All right, so I found some leaves outside and I've decided these are cottonwood. I wasn't sure if they were alder or aspen or cottonwood and um, I checked with the ranger and they're cottonwood. I'm adding a little bit of light green in there it's fall here, and so I've got gold in my hand as well. You can see the three leaves I'm using for my samples. And I am mixing right on my paper here again. Adding yellows and blending. That's one thing I love about these crayons is you can blend whatever colors you want together. Got a little bit more yellow ochre. And we'll bring out the yellows in this one. I love hearing these leaves rustle. This campground is in the middle of a alderwood forest. Grove, I guess I should say. And I really enjoyed their shade. They're huge grandfather trees. They're absolutely huge. 
I've enjoyed listening to them. So adding some more yellow on this one. I want this one to be more golden color. So I'll grab another gold color. Something a little bit more orange in it. Again, you can see me mixing on the tip. And then blending on my paper as I go. Touch more green. So this page is not by no means done, but I thought I'd give you a little glimpse into how I create a page. I'll do a little bit more on it and be back and share the finished composition on my page when I'm done. Thanks for painting with me today. Time to get your brushes wet. Grab your journals. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just reminding of you, you of your time while you play. And here's my finished journal page. A great reminder of the week I spent in downtown Denver at Cherry Creek State Park. I hope you're enjoying your travel journals and your garden journals and however you choose to journal. Just be sure you're keeping those brushes wet. Enjoy, friends.